in it or not. Anyways, moving on to uh, the, what else did I want to talk about? So yeah, there was a, uh, I think it was Lawrence who sent this over. <clears throat> And it was an interesting chart to do with potential uh, CPR. Now, uh, I would say that the level is slightly not there in a sense that I'll go through it just just quickly so we can get the context. So uh, what he's done is he's, he's, he's marked out pretty much where potential stop hunts are. Probably would have said that one there. And there would have been a level because you can see that's where the kind of like the lowest point is. Um, and then you see there and then you get the stop hunt so brilliant and then you pretty much end up going up to to, to the to the highs um but then what we do have is a level up top which is you know fairly accurate and then you get again the stop hunt here really nice for going to the downside right so there's that now um we know that uh, stop hunts turn into cprs so what we ended up having was a situation where anyone who went all the breakout traders and retracement traders that went long uh in this scenario yeah from from here and, and traded the breakout to the upside who were caught in their um in their positions you know loss aversion bias and all that there's a bit of relief there right there's a bit of relief definitely relief so that's that's correct now i always say this right i always say this is is from a technical analysis perspective we understand we definitely understand um why there should be more supply than demand because we've got not only traders who are caught in their positions up here um being relieved and if they bought here then they have to do what to exit they have to sell to exit because to get out of your trade if you're still in this trade if you if you haven't blown up and you haven't uh you know your your, your account <clears throat> You have to sell to exit. You've also got other traders who are looking at this area from a as a from a level of um, uh, um, getting into new trades. Yeah. So again, Lawrence has correctly identified that this has been a level of resistance, resistance, little fell kind of support, and then you've got traders looking to the left and seeing that as a significant level. So they're going to be getting in what short as well. So new traders, and then you've got ultimately traders who are getting in long in and around these areas here on pullbacks looking to take profit into where problem areas which is going to be in and around here right so there's going to be a lot of selling <clears throat> or sell orders again from a technical analysis perspective and this is what we look towards right but ultimately it's all about what is happening on from a fundamental perspective and this is the reason why we pick hard directions right the New Zealand dollar, the RBA are looking to hike rates. Yeah, so really and truly, we should never be standing in the way of that um, uh, uh, that fundamental bias because all the banks, right? All the banks are looking to buy. Yeah, the New Zealand dollar. There's not a bank that's looking to you know sell. Of course, they're going to make they can make money on on you know on, on pullbacks. Of course, that's that's just, that's what it is, right? They're making money on, on to the downside, but generally. Yeah, if a central bank is hiking rates, that's appreciative for a currency. Now, from from this perspective, um, if you've got more buy orders, right, than sell orders, right, this is what's known as an imbalance, I guess, or more sell orders than supply orders. If you've got way more buy orders than sell orders, then there's no um, technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of that. Yeah, and that's basically what's happened here. So we've looked at all the market participants and all the known market participants from a technical analysis perspective and that's what CPR is right we're just looking at what typical you know traders do around levels of support and resistance yeah and we've got all this potential selling technically analysis wise right hence the reason why you're seeing you know the market sell off here and sell off here but ultimately it was used as buying yeah, by the financial institutions because they understand the bigger picture and what value really is. So there was definitely more buying than the amount of technical analysis traders who were trying to sell around here. So anyone who's looking at that and thinking, well, that technical analysis setup didn't work, it's because of, you know, there was there was easily more buying. And last week, um, you know, I don't know if you if you guys had seen last week's um, uh, group call where. Um, 
I think Juju was talking about, uh, or the week before, matter of fact, Juju was talking about getting short on this, uh, this, this. Uh, I think it was this currency pair. I think it might have been. I think it might have been somewhere around here. Yeah. So it was around here. Let me just. Um, I think it was somewhere there. And he thought that this might have been a stop hunt. And I, I remember, and I said to him, do not. Well, I said I couldn't say do not, but I said, you know that um, you might want to not take that trade simply because you're going against the fundamentals yeah and he was saying that he wanted to get in because of you know short-term profits and i said mm -mm, mm -mm. no it's not it's not something that you really want to stand in the way of and this is why traders generally lose um uh in trading right because they do the right things and then all it takes is one wrong thing to undo the good things that you've done and this is what discipline is right it's not about short-term gains because you haven't taken a trade in you know a couple of days the, the smart money are going long that's just you know fact there's no debating right so even if even if prices you know did do a bit of a stop hunt and came down yeah all that does is that that teaches bad habits because then you're you're gonna it's gonna reinforce that you know what I can take shorts at levels even though I'm ultimately long and Juju was long by the way as well he was long and short at the same time but he was looking at short-term profits yeah to try and nick a couple of pips or two yeah to the downside yeah before prices ended up you know going to the upside and that's not i mean you can think about trading like that but you know what there's so many people that do and they're not successful then why would you why would we go about doing that right it's just having the patience to understand that where the money is flowing into and out of so the same thing is here and i'm not saying that lawrence was going to go short here at all i'm not saying that i'm just saying that ultimately what i'm what i'm trying to get at is this is um is I'm trying to make the point that we can see technical setups all day long, all day long, yeah? But this, the fundamentals and risk sentiment, right? Technical analysis, there's no technical analysis setup that's going to stand in the way of risk on, risk off, fundamental analysis, none. It's just, that's just the way that, you know, you have to think about things. So, although brilliant setup, I would probably say this is this would have been technically like an A1 setup, and I would if if risk was off, then I would have been probably all over this, right? This would have been a, and it would have followed through, um, because traders would have been buying more likely to buy the Japanese yen in that in that scenario. But from this scenario, you can't, you, well, you shouldn't really look for any kind of uh, short trades against where you want to trade or where the big money is flowing. And we know where the money is flowing because we do our fundamental analysis. That's just the way it works. But also as well, um, I just wanted to say this, is that the level itself, in fact, the CPR level is is not there. Yeah, it's actually around here. And so this is where you'd probably wanna look for, let me change the color. Uh, any kind of buying opportunity is going to be around here because we're well, the first place to look for buying and it's because of the actual level so let me just clear that right so we've got a level of support and resistance remember it's all about the support and resistance yeah so any traders who would have got short here yeah in and around this zone here so traders would have got short here for sure so I'm not saying that there's not traders caught in this in this area there's definitely traders caught in this area but ultimately the, 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 the most obvious level, the first level, is going to be here. Because you've got, if you look to the left, that's created a new level where traders would, you know, or the, or the most recent level where traders are likely to be caught in that area, right? So, if we're taking that zone, it's there that, that you really want to look for. So, this, around this 70, it starts from... You know the just just below that 78 round number yeah and then into here so all this is is would be um, where we would put the CPR so this would be the C because traders are caught here of course all these traders are caught as well um, but the high of the range is what, is what we're looking at yeah because prices may not come down this deep all these guys may want to get out of their you know short trades because if they if they went short here yeah and then now they're caught, so that's C, this is the P, as you correctly put, and this area here would be where the R is. 
you know, so that's where we're looking now, I'm not saying that price is going to bounce off here I don't know prices could bounce off of there but ultimately yeah this is where the most um, uh, demand will be right so somewhere within this zone why is that and it's because as I've just explained but you could get and if that's a level of support and resistance as well and it is say if it is but it is right again just explaining this you're going to have traders who obviously have been caught in their positions trying to get out so if they've gone short yeah they need to buy to exit their trade and that would be obviously at that level there yeah then you've also got a deeper level right that traders will look to potentially get out yeah if prices if this level gets maybe manipulated and comes down a bit deeper right because new traders are going to be getting in here as well so all these try guys will also have a chance to get out of their trade yeah and there'll be more buying if they went short here so this whole area of demand no one can no one can tell you exactly what price is going to you know uh, reverse at who knows nobody knows right it's not it's not it's not our job what's well, it's our job to try to predict it or try to take advantage of it but no one will ever know so it's just but we know the roughly where this zone is and it's in if it's in alignment with um you know our, our fundamental bias and risk sentiment bias then i think the top of this area here is where you know you're going to get new traders getting involved capture pain relief traders getting involved traders who you know got short here and who are taking profit at you know problem areas um that's where you know there's going to be a lot of demand but also as well the bigger picture is what we have to understand is if there's a lot of traders looking to buy and a lot of institutions looking to buy here then they need to fill their boots and they want to buy for cheaper so again it could come down into these zones right and but eventually probably turn around if risk remains on and i think this area here is going to be a really nice trade i do i'm cautious of buying at highs right so i would really want prices to still prove that there is a lot more and then wait for a deeper pullback that makes more sense um buying at highs i'm not too keen on that so if if prices did come back down to this area i would really want more upside potential um so if it did come down into this deeper zone then yeah brilliant but um uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm I'm a bit hesitant to buy at at highs, unless the risk reward is really really good, and depends on depending on obviously the time frame. But thank you for this, and I know I went into a bit bit of depth um, <clears throat> on this, but I hope it kind of clears um, you know that level up and where potentially if you're looking to get involved in this trade, uh, where the levels you should really be looking at first um because you might miss the opportunity right prices might come down and then you, you're waiting for this area down here and prices may never get down there it might just literally turn around somewhere within that zone right